Okay, people, um, this is Zephy Brody, and I'm going to do a tutorial, hopefully, quickly, on uh, how I make um, my mesh template kits into my products um, in a production line, which is I, I've always used sort of a production line feel to it so that I can texture all the sizes and get them ready um, all at once. Um, this is what would be the website um, for Marketplace in one of Millie Emilco, <laughs> Millie Emilco, I can't pronounce it, um, her store. And she has full permission um, mesh clothes so that you can texture them yourself and stick them back out there and sell them in your own shop. This is... Um, quite a handy thing to have especially since in my case I have a rockabilly shop and she has a lot of things that fall into this category I absolutely love this new one and it's on sale see if you pay attention on the weekends um, the money I will make back on this will be quite amazing so I bought this last night and um hang on here I am in um, Second Life, and uh, here's my folder where it arrived into my inventory. What you need to do first once you buy one of these kits is in your received items, it comes all unpacked and everything in there. So a lot of times I just leave junk in here. Um, bad for me, I know I don't organize very well. Um, you have your you have your models in here and you also have your textures the models are pretty cool I usually try one on see how it looks pull one out um, have a look at it <clears throat> I had um, looked at this pardon um, they all it, it all seems to be the blue one um, in the package sometimes she will put the different colors on the models already which is pretty neat because you can see all the prefab ones that you're gonna get and um, then down here in your textures you have um, all the textures that it takes to you know retexture this and make it whatever color you want say I know my friend QT always wants everything in pink and a moment ago this was resing so um, this is what it looks like um, all splayed out and um, it has your belt on here and everything so it's gonna have all the faces on here on one page I mean on one texture so you're not gonna have to upload one for every single thing usually um, but you're gonna have a bunch of faces that you have to be careful and highlight all of when you're texturing them so I, I'm there's a page on this. Let me show you. You want to look at this a lot on her um, particular sales. It'll tell you which ones are faces. Every one of these things that's a different color is a different face on here. So sometimes it takes a little bit of brain power to figure out which one of these faces is where on this map here to say. Um, what I want to do is find um, what say the little edge of her collar um, like in here you know the front of the shirt or something or maybe the tip of the collar and I usually put like a little um, cherry or something um, decoration on some of these so knowing where these particular corners are on the texture map is pretty important you know, sometimes it takes a lot of um, a little bit of experimentation to find out exactly where something should lay. I mean, like, oh, I did one with a, a a leather jacket with a little poodle pin on it. It took me quite a while to move the pin around and find just the exact spot for it to look right. Or decals. Um, or like, I've had mittens and fifty skirts and had to put like a poodle down here, and um, it has to sit right with the flow of the fabric to where it's going to show when you're standing there and I won't be wasting much more time on this particular subject but what you want to do is save these textures 
to your computer and um, that way then you have them to edit them in Photoshop or whatever program you're using and then after you get something created which is where I'm gonna pause this and come up with something to slap on here um, as my example um, then I will show you how I do my production line as I was working along I came up with another little helpful hint that I think you might um, dig hang on here um, wherein you take this why is that on there okay. <clears throat> hopefully it's recording me um what I need now is to show you this hint if you are texturing something in GIMP or something let's say and you want to try it on your thing in Second Life but you won't want to pay the ten dollars to keep constantly uploading goofs all the time you go into the texture of the item um, and you pick local then you pick it from your desktop by saying add you will be picking it from your desktop where you've been working or where you put it and then it shows up in this list as something you can try on the model okay say this button was in the right was in the wrong spot a minute ago and I just changed it in GIMP came back real quick saved it and then the changes happened here in Second Life immediately and I just keep working on the same file that way it's cheaper than spending the ten linden dollars every time that you um, want to try something out and you're not sure if it's gonna work or not okay that was uh, a little throw in I'm almost ready for the um, production line as I have a an outfit here I have put a um, poodle applique thing on the back and one on the front just uh, when it was an old theme of mine that I made for a sock hop, sock hop hunt one time and um, I just used those particular logos that I had um, from back then and that is what we're going to um, stick out there on the first one so bear with me a second I personally had to move where I had more space um, these things are about 48 prims per land impact I believe so you want to make sure you have enough prims on your land to res all five of them it is a lot quicker when you can do more than one um, address at a time um, so we will take and stick them out in a row I usually go extra small or the smallest size to the largest in a line there I have them in a line from the extra small all the way up to the extra large and um, in a row I use the align tool right here to make sure they were pretty well in a straight line the reason why I do that is because then I take my um, create tool and make a happy sphere and a little sphere smaller the better but not too crazy and then I line it up inside the dress where you can kinda see it oh I've lost it I just love the working on the fly and then I make a copy of this sphere into each dress hopefully where nobody will see it but it's going to be invisible anyway so and that does attach to the hand eventually all mesh clothes usually attach to the right hand am I correct I think then you will label these in your general tab I usually call it whatever the dress is gonna finally be called like Zeph's Rockabilly Poodle skirt dress whatever the hell it's going to be called in each one but then I want to make sure and rename every single one of these separately with the size at the end this is very important and make sure the size is matching the dress that it is sitting inside got that part 
All right, now I'm going to do that and then come back for my pause. All of these are now labeled with the size extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And the reason why we have done that is because when you connect them, you're going to link the prims. You will grab the dress first, then the ball, and then say link. Presto, then the whole object then becomes pink poodle dress extra small right and looky here i am the creator rather than um mw boa this is changing it to where you are the creator at least on you know first glances i mean if you get in there and edit linked on somebody's stuff then you can see that it's not really you the creator However, this is a nice little trip if you're working on um, your own shop. That way, anyone investigates someone wearing something, at least they know where to get your item. So you repeat this process down the line on every single one of these. Um, all of them are now... Uh, set up to where they are linked to my um, prim with the proper name. Now we will highlight every one of the dresses. The whole thing. The whole thing. We're not going to select faces on this particular one. Then you get into the texture and you grab your pink poodle um, one that we made and throw it on there. And guess what? Even though the little ball in the middle is going to be colored. But that's okay. Now then, you will select face. And you will get a hold of each one of the little balls. Of course, I'm standing in the way. Oh, happy. And then you will take on that one and make them transparent. Presto. Sometimes I have forgotten. <laughs> fine step okay now each one of these dresses is an individual thing it is ready to be taken into inventory put in a package put in my shop and everything else you want to give them a glance over make sure everything looks okay and uh, yeah i would say that was a successful production line of pink poodle dresses and um i know it's kind of hokey not something I would actually do in my shop, but um, I'm just doing this for the kicks of it because it was uh, handy. Anyway, I'm going to package these up now in my own fashion and get them ready to put in the shop. And uh, so there is the production line I use. I'm sure a lot of people have maybe even a better production line idea. Um, but that is the one I use for mesh templates. hope you all learned something you can use even if it's something small and here's a couple of modeling shots of the idea thank you for watching